Now we're going to populate our database. Now all that really means is that we're entering data records into it. This can be done a few ways, one of which is by entering records directly into a table. We'll do that with the books table first, so we can start entering the books we have to sell. Our books table is empty. It has no records in it, so we're going to add some. In Access, you enter records into a table in Datasheet View, which is how the table opens. To add a record to an empty table, type the record into the row with the asterisk. We don't need to enter anything into the Book ID field because the data type is set to Auto Number. So this field will assign a unique number to each record you enter. We already set the price data type to currency, so when someone enters numbers here, it appears as a dollar amount. If I try to enter text here, I get this message that lets me know that the data I enter does not match the currency data type that I set up. I'm going to add one more record. I want to point something out to you that has to do with formatting. If you look closely, you'll notice that you can't really see the entire title. So I'm going to double click on the line between the two fields to expand my title field. That's a lot better. Now we should make sure that info that will be entered into the fields is formatted properly so that it is accurate and can be useful later. This is called data validation and it is done by setting the field properties in Design View. You've seen this view before when we set up the data types up here, and now we'll be setting some of these properties in the bottom half of the window. We'll start with the validation rule. We'll set it up so that the price must be greater than zero, because we're not giving books away. Now the validation text is what you want to appear for your user when they enter something incorrectly. So if they were to enter zero for the price, we want a message to pop up that says must be a dollar value higher than zero dollars. The required field property is set to no by default, but in this case it must be set to yes so that a user has to enter a price for each book in our store. They will never be allowed to not enter a price. Let's take a look at the default field properties for a field that has a text data type. Field size refers to how many characters the user can type in. For the category field, we don't know how long a category name may be, so we'll leave it set to the default 255 characters, which is probably way more characters than we'll ever use, but you never know. I also want to set up a validation rule for category. I want the database user to have to enter one of the categories that's used at the store. I'll use the expression builder to do this. The validation rule starts with an equal sign. We'll place quotation marks around each category name, which will tell Access that it needs to check the entered data to make sure it matches exactly one of the choices we have inside the quotation marks. So if someone enters something in lowercase or a category that's not in the list, it won't accept the data. This helps cut down on data entry mistakes. I'm inserting OR between each word, which simply means I'm giving Access lots of options to choose from. I'm telling Access this field must include fiction, OR, nonfiction, OR, kids, and so forth. Now, so users know what we expect of them, we have to set the validation text to read must be fiction, nonfiction, and so on. This text is what our user will see if they enter a category that doesn't match what we have told Access to accept, just like when we set the price to be greater than zero earlier. 
So all of the settings here look good. I'll save my changes. Okay, now since we entered nonfiction in our category field earlier, before setting our field properties, I received this message saying, data integrity rules have been changed. Existing data may not be valid for new rules. By clicking yes, I can choose to have my data tested with the new rules. So I'm going to do that. Now, let's get back to entering records. I want to show you how the validation rule works. So for category, I'll enter cooking when it really should be food. See, I get a message that tells me I must enter one of the following options. I'll go ahead and correct this. Let's take a look at the customers table. Now sometimes you may have to enter data into tables that already have a lot of data records in them. You can see that I've already added some records to this table. I can see that it's populated with 10 records by taking a quick glance but I can also see the number of records here at the bottom left side of the table. This is a record navigation. I can choose to go back to the first, previous, next, or last record, or create a new record from here. I can also create a new record from the Home tab by clicking on New in the Records group. Now all I have to do is enter my data. Sometimes you'll need to edit a record that already exists in a table. For example, let's say one of our customers has gotten married and I need to change her name. I could take time to look through every single record to find this one customer, but what if I had thousands of records? It would be much, much easier to use a find feature to find and replace an entry. From the Home tab, click on Find in the Find group the Find and Replace dialog box appears. Type in what you want to find here. I want to find Williams so I can change Kiara Williams to Kiara Rogers. So I'll click on the Replace tab and type in Rogers beside Replace With. This down here shows the last field I was in happened to be the customer ID field and that I'm searching the whole field for a match and that I want to search all records in the table. Now I don't want to search in the customer ID field for this information so I'm going to click the drop down arrow and choose to search the customer's table to find this information. Click find next to find the information and then replace to make the change. Sometimes you may want to copy and paste a record. Let's go back to the books table. It's common to have more than one volume of a particular book, like State Parks Volume 1 and State Parks Volume 2. To copy a record, select the record, right click, and select copy. Now select the new record, right click, and select paste. Now all I have to do is make this volume 2. If you ever need to delete a record, just select the record, right click, and select delete record. A dialog box appears that tells you that this action can't be undone. I'm going to click no because I don't want to delete my record. When you delete a record, it still auto numbers, just not in consecutive order. For example, if I delete rows 23 through 30, my table is now numbered 1 through 22 and then starts at 31. But don't worry, this is okay because each of your remaining entries still has a unique ID number. There are certain times when deleting a record may impact other tables, but we'll talk about that in another lesson. Now you know how to work with records in a table itself. And you can see that you have to be careful in how data is entered into a database because you only get out of the database what you put into it. Another way to enter data is with the form, which allows other people to enter data in a way that is comfortable to them. 
We'll look at setting up forms and using forms to enter records next.